just freshen that area up because you'd be surprised when you take a mundane area of your life and you just change it slightly, maybe get something new. Yeah. Slick. <laughs> Amazing. So we thought as it's a new year, we'd treat ourselves to a new kitchen bin. <laughs> I had no idea what you were gonna say. I changed the bin liner uh, only once because you normally do the bins. I couldn't get the, the top back on, the lid back on. So I... Oh, I could see you getting nervous there at the end. Oh, yeah. You was... thought it was going to go wrong. Floundering there, floundering. But you did it. Looks like square. a sort of squarey type rectangle yeah, yeah. with curved sides. Yeah. But it's not. It comes out by about a centimetre. Yeah. Who designed that like that? Why? So you've got to have it facing the right way to get the lid back on. Trust me. Welcome everybody to a brand new year, a, a whole year. new season of Bakery Bears video shows. Yes. How have you been? Happy new year everyone. Yes, but even before that, did you have a nice Christmas? Did you? I hope so. We did. We did. We ate way too much meat, as we spoke about on our last Bakery Bears radio I show. I didn't, you did. Yeah, because you just stopped yourself. And to be fair, yeah. I did too, to an extent. We threw away way too much meat. <laughs> We've covered all that. Go and listen to our radio show. Yes. You'll hear us bemoan how we did Christmas wrong, but also yes. right. And I'll tell you why. Because we played lots of games. We did. Which, th that really makes a Christmas, doesn't it? Yeah. You've got to get the old board games out. We played some Scrabble. Yeah. Played lots of Bananagrams. Oh, Bananagrams. That's fun. We discovered. I've, I've got Bryony Bananagrams in her advent calendar. I made her an advent calendar. I think I spoke about this, actually. You did? Yeah, but I, m I made her an advent calendar. And on one of the days, sort of, it was about the 20th, I think. I left it till quite close to Christmas because I knew she'd be excited. I bought a, a set of Bananagrams and we'd never played it before. No. But unbeknownst to us, she actually plays it at school with her friends. She's got a friend who brings in a bag of it and yeah. they play it at school. And That's we were amazing. like, so we've just been going bananagram crazy and I absolutely love it. We've been going bananagrams. We that have. sounds like a condition. Yeah, we can never remember what you say though when you turn them oh, over. Just and say. We're, we're just old and can just notice, turn it over. Is it split? Is it peel? Is it, I don't know. Just turn it over and get on with it. <laughs> It but really doesn't matter. It's been great fun. So if you haven't tried it and you like games like that, yeah. I'd say if you definitely like word go. games, yes. definitely go and get yourself a bag of banana grams. This was the the Christmas where we discovered that actually there's someone else in the house who actually quite likes Lego. Yes. Well, I like I like Lego. I'm not bothered about building, I don't think. No, no. But I really like sorting. I all didn't the pieces. say building. No, I just said no. you like Lego. Yeah, you do we, like Lego. <laughs> Bryony got a big Lego set for Christmas and we haven't finished it yet. But we spent a lot of Christmas, most afternoons actually, didn't we? We'd spend an hour or so doing Or sit down Lego. at the kitchen table. Yeah, yeah. And I would open the bags and sort all the pieces. And then you would give her the pieces as she But then you would assist once you And I'd finished. help with that, yeah. yeah. And then Bryony would build. Yes. But she's um, like off. Oh, I love sorting it, sorting it, colours and, and shapes. Well, and, that's it. Ooh, that's yes. it. It was really cool. It's because my organising brain. Over the course of Christmas and over the course of doing this, I was able to sort of teach Kay pro level Lego brick sorting. Yeah. She started yeah. off just putting them into colours, and then by the end, she was doing colours and shapes. Yeah. It was amazing, and that makes because that actually is half. The battle. Yeah, that makes the, the, right the building much easier because you can just... Yes, it's a slick operation if you've got a sorter, a distributor and a builder. <laughs> We're very organised with Lego now. That's and the way that you do it. it was, it's, been, it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. Yes. I've been accompanied in my Lego by the most amazing marshmallows I've got to tell you about. Oh, yes. And actually, the, my marshmallow love, I love mar marshmallows. I don't eat many sweets, really, but I can't resist marshmallows. And I got a pack uh, from a friend in America. She sent us a little parcel. And in there, there was a pack of Smashmallow. And it was the toasted vanilla. Yeah, toasted vanilla flavour. Well, I loved those things. And no one else was allowed any. 
and I just had like a couple a day and I made them last quite a long time. I didn't want any. No, you you're, you don't like marshmallow. No. They're very different to sort of English marshmallow, if you like. They were yes. much firmer. Yes. Oh, I absolutely loved them. It was the toasted vanilla that I, I really loved. Anyway, that made me go hunting for marshmallow, didn't it? And yeah. I found a handmade marshmallow company in this country called the Marshmallowist. Did you find it or did the hairy bikers help you? No, no, I right. found it and then, and then I, it the I ordered some and then I happened to be watching the hairy bikers over Christmas and they visited the marshmallowist. I couldn't believe it. She's it's near like fate. She's near Leeds. Right. So anyway, I got these marshmallows for Christmas and you just get six big square marshmallows in a box and they were coconut. Let me tell you, they were the best things I have ever eaten. Now look, as it is New Year's and it is time to freshen, thing, freshen things up a little bit, someone thought it would be a good idea to freshen up their diary. Oh gosh. Yeah. We're in a category five full on obsession, bordering on needing therapy to I do need, with I journals. Need, I need planner journal, bullet journal therapy right now. Let me tell you, because I'm reaching the end of my the day, journaling it? tether. Today is the today day. Today is the day. So for Christmas, right, I, I decided before Christmas that I wanted a new sort of daily planner. I don't know what everybody calls these things. I would just call it a diary, but it's like my work diary, if you like. And I decided I wanted a new one, and I had a look around, and I decided on the Hobonichi Cousin for several reasons. I, I really looked into this, and I looked at reviews and everything. Decided on the Hobonichi Cousin because it's Japanese, and everything that the Japanese do stationary-wise is just fantastic. I was just intrigued by it, and I, I thought I liked the way it was laid out. And I thought, right, I can have everything in one place. It'll be marvellous that I got. So I got this for Christmas and I got pens and stickers and everything, right? I was going full on planner, planner mode. So here it is, it's the Hobonichi Cousin. I even got one of these handy dandy that I didn't even know what they were for. Didn't even know they existed. One of these, what do we call, pencil boards. And you need that pencil board because the paper is so thin in the Hobonichi. It's incredibly thin, it's a particular type of paper, but if you don't put something underneath when you're writing, it kind of imprints the, the next two or three pages. Anyway, I got all these things, I was so excited, opened it Christmas Day, I was like, oh my gosh, I am like beyond excited, got all these pens and, you know, I love stationery, so I was in my absolute element. I couldn't bring myself to touch it for a few days because I was just so worried about wrecking it. And I eventually did. And it was really only when we sort of started back into our normal work routine and I, I went in to sort of do my normal weekly planning that I realised that this actually, I don't think, is going to work for me. And I'd invested all this time and money. This thing's not cheap, you know. They're not, they're not cheap. I don't know what to say, really, because I feel like I'm letting myself down because it just isn't working. The way that this, the cousin works is it's separated into monthly spreads and then weekly spreads and then you get a page a day as well. So you get weekly pages. This is your weekly page. And then... After all your weekly pages, you get a day per page as well. Plus you get a monthly spread. And I realised that this is just all too much. It's all too much. You know what? Normally I would just use the weekly ones and that's how I plan. And then I thought, well, what am I going to do with the daily ones? Because I've put everything in my weekly ones. So what, what on earth do I do with all the daily ones? So I just had all of these thoughts going through my head. I watched every blooming YouTube you see, I, I'm not certain. You see, I think that what Kate's found is she's bought all these pens and, and 90, all of the good pens yeah. smudge like crazy. They do. You have to you leave know, it for ages I, for it to dry. Yeah. The cheapest, rubbishest pen, which she's used yeah. always, you can write on it and off you go. Even when you do write on it with that pen, you can still sort of see it from the other side. You can, anyway. you can. And, you know, people tend to use gel pens and they use also use fountain pens with the Hobonichi. But I just find, I mean, I'll show you the kind, there's nothing really on this page, but can you see how it shows through the other side? That's the other side that you can see there. So that immediately, winds me up. Immediately, it, it's... 
at the end of the day, something like this should be practical and useful yeah. and should be easy. Yeah. It should be an extension of your life, not become something which you have to change the way you live your life to no, suit no, the no. thing that you're using to do the yeah. planning. It felt like it was becoming a job. You well, know, I did start to So the to pen plan smudged. My weeks. You could see things through yeah, the, the, on the opposite side. The pens you're flicking using, around all over yeah, the place. And, and the paper creases like an absolute devil. You know, as soon as you... Look, you know, as soon as you turn a page, you probably can't tell, but it just creases. And I was like, I've not even used this thing, and it already looks used and a bit messy. And what's sort of um, terrifying is when you consider that a 799 one, which you can write on with any pen, and it doesn't smudge, yeah. and you can't see it through the other side, could have been <laughs> what she was using to, to yeah, plan her, no. Yeah, uh, weeks. yeah. I mean, historically, so the it's past... because of the fact that so many elements of it, which were supposedly going to be great and easy, yeah. weren't. No, it was just causing me like stress, and I couldn't use pens that I See, wanted to use. I think and... if you changed all those things, I have a feeling that the fact that you have to flick around a bit I wouldn't have... bother you so much. Maybe not. No, maybe not. But historically, I've always used one of these. It's a Katie Daisy weekly planner it's an a6 size ring bound i've used one of these the last three years and it's worked brilliantly well i don't know why i decided i needed to change because you were sick of all the pages with no. stuff on well you no, said no. that you were sick of having to turn over loads of pages to get to the next month well maybe but i don't know you know thinking back now comparing it and i'm you not also sure said it really you didn't have enough space bothered me there's not a huge amount of space you can see that it's beautiful it's not a huge amount of space for each day. Yeah. So I ended up using a little bullet journal as well through last year. I've got another planner coming today because after this, I realised the Hobonichi wasn't quite working. I then entered another realm of what else is there out there. And I've ordered a le Lexderm. You see, the thing is, right, if, if this gives you more space and you can put more things into it that you wanted to put yes, into one place, yes. it does perhaps make a lot of sense. Yeah, maybe it does, yeah. I the, think so. You know, the problem with this one is that I didn't have a lot of room and I ended up squeezing stuff in. Needless to say, she will be doing a review I'm on gonna do. I'm going to do, once I've decided on what I'm doing, Yes. <laughs> I will do a video just... Telling you all on all of the experience. ones that I'll you've show you looked the, at. Yeah, I'll show you the pens I got. I'll show you all the ones that I've got. I'll show you my thoughts. Folks, we need to get down to business. Yes. Because yes, this is a brand new year, and what a year we have in store for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Are you ready for a brand new show from Kay? Yes. Kay's cozy kitchen coming in February. Over the last couple of years, we've made some pretty dramatic changes to the way that we eat, and let me tell you. It's blooming marvellous. Yes. And in this series, we're going to be sharing with you, or we, Kay, is going to be sharing with you some of the things that we've done in the last couple of years that have literally transformed transformed our lives, to be honest. Because you are what you eat at the end of the day. Yeah, and I'll be showing you some of my kind of basic staple meals that we have on a regular basis. And then I'll also be showing you some more sort of puddingy, desserty things that we've adapted to, to make them easy on our tummies but and also still being delicious. Also, some other exciting things that you've never shown before. Really? Like bread. Oh, yes, I'm going to do some bread. So yeah. this is going to be a, a, quite a categoric sort of staple, bit of sort of... Um, yeah, yeah. Bread is comfort food for me. Yeah, but I make it every week for you. You do? So, again, it's, a, it's become a staple It's thing. that type of thing, though, isn't it, that... I don't know many people that couldn't get excited about a perfectly baked loaf no. of white bread. No, and you know, whenever I'm, whenever one comes out of the oven and Dan comes into the kitchen, he's like, oh. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I've had a shocking stomach since my last big operation. Yeah. And when I eat this bread, all the problems it's seem totally to go fine. away. fine. And you know, it's the spelt flour. We've spoke about this, haven't we? But we use spelt flour, or I use spelt flour now in baking, and it's just transformed everything, really. Yes. Yeah. For us, yeah. But what about not only Kay's Cozy Kitchen, how would you like to join me as we go walking the wall? Yes, this year, my brand new show is going to be a show which I've been destined to make for probably the last 30 years. I'll be delving completely into the story of how I 
fell in love with history because I fell in love with history at Hadrian's Wall. Yeah. And over the course of eight walks, we're going to be doing some very specific uh, walks in areas, some that I've been to before, but also some that I've never been to before and I've always wanted to go to, as we explore a gorgeous part of the world, but also discover the story of just probably for me, it's the most iconic British historical landmark. Mm-hmm. We start this year with the return of a show that we know you love. Coming later on in today's show is a brand new episode of My Favourite Colourways. Yes. To get there though, I need to ask a question. And that question is, of course, Kay Jones, what's on your needles? Yay! Oh, I've missed it. The first thing on my needles is... Lovely yarns. Oh, it's just bringing me so much... So much... I wanted... You know, I was thinking this morning when I was working on this and I was trying to think of a single word that is the feeling that I get when I'm working on this project and I feel a sense of peace. Robin on the fence down Aww. there. Oh! He's got such a red breast. There's nothing happier than oh, a lovely Robin. Oh, hello, little Robin. Is there? They're gorgeous. He's adorable. Or oh, she. And something that I discovered, I didn't realise that goldfinches don't migrate. Do they not? So those goldfinches that we've been seeing around are permanent residents. They will all, oh. unless of course they moved. But you know, once they move nests during the the lockdown period. I'd never seen goldfinches around no, here. No, I'd never. I, no, me neither. And during the lockdown period, it's Start just had such an amazing them. effect yeah. on the wildlife. And I we started that's seeing been, goldfinches. That's been global. Yes, definitely been global, which is, you've got to think of the positive, really, you know, focus on the positives. Yeah. We're, we're very lucky around here. We, we do have some lovely birds. I've seen tree creepers uh, quite often. And, and lots of, we've seen some kites blue as well, tits. actually. We flying. see blue tits regularly now. And we, and we never used to see blue tits at all. No. No. It was always just sparrows that we yeah. saw. Yeah. And goldfinches, for me, are just are they're amazing my things. It's like a, you see them flying, you're like, Ooh, what was that shot of like bright yellow? They're amazing. It, it looks to me like a tropical bird. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. And I was chatting to my mum, and I just assumed that they would fly off somewhere because mm-hmm. they look tropical. They yeah. don't. They stick yeah. around all year. So we must keep our eyes out for the goldfinches. But I so yes. Digress. When every single time I pick this up and work on it, I do just get a, that sort of calm, peaceful feeling. I have no idea why. I'll show you what it is. So I, I bought myself an advent calendar this year and I decided to buy an advent calendar from Pixie Yarns in the UK. And I chose her calendar because I've used a lot of her yarns over the past sort of year or two. And I really like her her dye, her, her, you know, her dyeing. She's, she uses lots of lovely bright colours and you know, her speckling's always lovely, and I, I just have always really liked her yarn. So I thought, right, okay, I'm going to treat myself to one of her calendars this year. And what I liked particularly about it is it, it didn't have a theme, it wasn't titled any sort of theme at all, and it was, I mean, it was packaged lovely, it was beautifully packaged in a gorgeous box, but it wasn't overly packaged, you know, it, it was just... I liked the sort of straightforwardness of it. You, it was a lovely box that you could reuse and then each of the yarns was in a little bag and just brilliant. And they all had a name, but it was just sort of random, wintry, festive sort of names. And I really liked that. And the colours are all completely random. They're not faded, they're not, you know, anything like that. Just random colours. And that's just exactly what I wanted. So I'll show you. I mean, I've got the whole bundle here of the ones I haven't used yet. So these are all the yarns. Look at that pink. Oh, gosh. And you just get... There's, there was a lot of sort of bluish tones, which I liked. But then you will get shots of a brighter colour. I'll just tell you a couple of the sort of brighter ones. Look, look at the purple and the orange. The little tags inside are my numbers because I've re... I renumbered them because I wanted them in a certain order. Just gorgeous, you know, and the, I mean, these, the pinks, there were, there were a few pinks. I would have liked a bit more pink, but you know, you know what I'm like with the pink. I'm going double pink today, you can see. But look at the colours, just gorgeous. And then you did get a lot of sort of darker shades as well and more sort of subdued colours. It's a really good variety of colours, just lovely. And I wanted to use these all together, so I decided to just design myself a little something. 
and I thought, oh, I'll do a cowl and I'll just design a, a simple chevron. And so I got into the world of what, you know, how, how can you can create a chevron. And I knew in my head how you did that, but there's, there's various ways you can do it. And I plumped for one that had just got a little bit of something going on. But I'll show you, this is where I'm up to. Oh my goodness. I just love it. I really like that one. It's gorgeous. And the purple too is great. I've loved all of the colours. You know, even the colours that I thought I wouldn't care too much about. Like this grey, let me show you. I've got the leftovers so far in a little bag. Obviously not big enough. I'm using about eight grams of each of the 20 gram minis, which is brilliant because if you just had 10 gram minis, it would work. Is that like the bags that Wool Warehouse send their stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's a little organza bag. Someone commented somewhere when we spoke about these before and said that they're like that because moths can't get through them. Oh, right. Is that, that must be true, right? I don't know, but that's certainly what someone said. Yeah, I don't suppose they can because it's like a really tiny mesh, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but like the grey, for example, if I hold it close, can you see all the bronze flecks in there? And that wasn't necessarily apparent in the little mini skein, but as I was knitting it, I kept getting these little bronze flashes, and I thought, that's just wonderful. So even the colours that I wasn't expecting to love so much, I have, and like this one, it's gorgeous. And in the skein, that just looked fairly solid. It's not at all, it's a, like a mauve colour with gold, it's been really lovely. So yeah, I designed myself this little chevron and I, I wanted it to be the sort of project where I didn't need to knit a rib. I just wanted to cast on and start with the first mini into the pattern. So to aid that, what I did was I put some garter ridges in there so that that helps it lay flat. And then there's no need, you know, once I block this, it's gonna lay, I can tell from now, you know, it's gonna lay lovely and flat on the edge. And I'm just knitting, as, you know, cast, what am I on? Number seven, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm on the seventh color now, which again, this is one I wasn't sure I would love particularly. However, when I was winding it, and I hand wind my 20 gram minis, cause it's a bit of a faff on a ball winder. I don't find they wind very well. But when I hand wound it, can you see this one? It reminds me of like a Victorian Christmas. Oh, I just love it. Just beautiful. So I showed this actually on our pop that we just did on Sunday, just gone. And I said, oh, you know, I'm gonna, I think I'll write this pattern up and I'll maybe release it later in the year, ready for people to have advent calendars this year. And I had loads of messages saying, oh no, don't, you know, I really love it. Don't wait until later in the year, just release it now because I've got a mini set and I don't know what to do with it. I thought, well, that's a fair point, isn't it? So I will do that. As soon as I'm finished with this and as soon as I've, you know, got it quickly through testing, I will release it so that you can use your mini sets that you've got and you may not know what you want to do with them. And I'm calling it in my head at the moment, I'm calling it the pixie dust cowl because it's pixie yarns and I just, I just liked that feeling. It's kind of like something that maybe a little pixie would knit. I don't know, it just has that lovely feeling. And you know, every single time I pick this up, I'm just, it's like, oh, this is really nice. I just get that feeling. Because it's simple enough pattern, but the fact that you're doing something, there is a bit of patterning in there, that keeps me going. If I was just purely knitting all plain, if you like, or as plain as you could knit a chevron, I don't know, I don't think it would have the same appeal because I like that you have that little target to reach, you know, oh, you know, I want to get to the next garter ridge, you've done that right, I want to get to the next colour, and you just have that little target and it's really nice. I did look up on Raveler actually, and there was a cowl already called Pixie Dust Cowl, but it was from a pattern from quite a few years ago and it was discontinued, you couldn't actually get it any longer and it only had a few projects anyway. So I thought, well, you know, I'm happy to use that name because effectively there's nothing there with that name because that pattern you can't get anymore. So I think that's what I'll call it because it just seems to suit it. And I'm just loving it. So I'm on that colour I just showed you and then I have these two coming up next. Look at that green. So I've got the green next and then this sort of purplish blue. Just absolutely loving it. 
So yeah, I'll show you that, you know, my progress next time and just keep you updated on the lovely pixie dust cowl. Dan Jones? Yes. What's on your needles? Excellent. And your arm? Yes, I know. Look. Woohoo! I love this. Wow. It's oh, Alexander, it looks great. Doesn't it? It looks sort of like medieval or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely you know what get I mean? that. It's the sleeve to the Alexander colorwork jumper with the with the gorgeous colorwork yoke. And this is the one where you, you've got a choice. You can do the colour work on one sleeve or you can do it on both sleeves. Yes, yes. I remember. And, and I can't you're decide. going for the cool one sleeve. Yeah, as, I think it sort of looks refined. I think you should, yeah, refined. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think it's sort it's of exciting cool, and, and quite cool. I've been stunned to realise I am at my most contented when I'm knitting a sleeve. Really? I love it. Wow. I love it. That's kind of against what most knitters I think would say. I'm going to tell lot, you why I love maybe it. Maybe not most, but a lot of knitters don't like knitting sleeves. I can tell you why I love it, and that's because the combination of a bit of colour work, plain knitting with increases on a night when I'm, you know, winding down a bit, yeah. it's the perfect amount of something to keep me interested whilst not being too much yeah. that I mess it up. Yeah, I think the fact you're knitting it on DPNs as well, I think that's a big factor into your enjoyment. Yeah. Because I know that when I've knit sleeves before, I would historically have done them on Magic Loop. And I, I don't... I only really like using Magic Loop for socks. Anything else, I'm not really keen. So I think if Sorry. I was going to knit a sleeve, I would use DPNs. Or you can get now 12-inch circulars. Right. I've knit a sleeve on 12-inch circulars. That's what I've done. Yeah. And that's really good too. Yeah. What I'm using the Cubics, the Knit Pro Cubics. You are. Excellent. I was worried I got the name wrong. I knew the Cubics bit was right. I just couldn't remember the company. Yeah, I'm them. sure it's Knit Pro. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm using the Knit Pro Cubics, and that's been very transformative for me because the the square nature keeps them in check. You know, when you're messing around, and also as well the square nature just because they're metal, they're a, bit, a little bit slippy. But the square nature just keeps them a bit more secure. Mm. I found circular, it was fine. You know, DPNs are definitely the, the way forward for me whenever possible. But throwing the square bit in just... And also the, the ergonomic nature of the squareness really seriously helps a lot. Mm. The colour choices are just great. It's brilliant. Did I, mean, I choose these? Well, yes, the way we've been running is... Because, of course, this is in my... I'm into my second year now. Quest. Oh, I'll do it. I'll hold it the right way up. I think it's so cool. My self-contained knitter quest. And yes, I want to get better at choosing colours. I know what it reminds me of. What? Do you know, and that's why I said medieval, I think. Do you know in a chapter house? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Around the edges where they all sit. That's right. This is exactly what it looks like. It really does. The, the monks would sit under here yeah. in little chairs. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's actually bang on. It is. What we've been doing with the choosing of the colours is we go on and look, and Kay gives me a sort of... Yeah. You could use this, 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 and this. And I go, okay, well, let's go with this, this, and this. So Kay's giving me the the broad spectrum. Yes, and the, then you narrow the it down. Work. Yeah, and then yeah. I narrow it down. But the cool thing that I did on this was, because on the Alexander, it's only... I've not got the pattern here, actually. It's only knitted in two colours mm. but up here there's a there's a diamond yeah, yeah. and I said that's let's right. stick a different colour yes. in there and we've got a, a zippy colour zippy we? green oh that's right yeah. that sounds like zippy a, an actual you character zippy? <laughs> oh I love zippy <laughs> they'd say, it was terrible because they'd zip his mouth shut I know he would zip his mouth shut when he got annoying <laughs> If only we could do that with certain people. Uh, th that is, <laughs> of course, Rainbow. <laughs> Rainbow, yeah. With Rod, yeah. Jane and Freddie. Yes. And Bungle. Bungle, Zippy, and, and what was the cow called? Cow? Oh, not a cow. Was he a hippo? Is a, a hippo. Cow? Was he a hippo? The pink one. Was he a hippo? What was he called? Oh, uh, who was Jeffrey? He was the Jeffrey big bear. Jeffrey was the... No, Jeffrey was the man, the human. Bungle was the big bear. Bungle was the bear. I really couldn't stand Bungle. Didn't you like Bungle? Oh, I couldn't stand him. Uh, he was like Bungle, such Zippy an annoying and... person. 
everybody's shouting it now, aren't you? What was the pink hippo thing called? Hopefully it'll come to us. Yeah, I feel maybe bad. It'll come it to just us. shows you, doesn't it? Because he was very shy and unassuming. He was. He and was. now we I can't loved remember his, his name. I loved his voice. Yeah. He had a great voice. But I feel so contented on a night when I'm knitting a sleeve. And so I'm really excited now. Because I'm probably 15 rounds away mm. from finishing sleeve number one. And then I'll be jumping into sleeve number two. And it'll be interesting to see how I feel about sleeve number two. Because, of course, I won't be doing the colour work. No. You might change your mind, might you? No, I, I don't think you're so. Not, you're Because I'm, well, I'm 15 rounds away, so this is right. imminent. So I don't think I'm going to change my mind. So it's let low pee yarn. Yes. I've spoke about many times. Is this the grey? Yes. So I'm not sure the actual colourway name, but this is the number for the grey. For the dark grey. Yes, the dark grey. Sorry, the dark grey. Yes. Yeah, not the silvery one. Because this is your main colour, isn't it? That's rough sea, isn't it? Is it rough sea? Yeah. Because it looks more grey in this light, but sometimes it does have a greenish hue. But it would Isn't do. It funny how it in looks. In good light, it yeah, would have a in, greenish in hue. In different lights, it looks a different colour. Yeah. It's fantastic anyway. I think it's an amazing thing. One of the things that I'm thrilled about in my sort of quest for... Because there's important things that we all need to know in the act of being able to knit well. And one of the things that we're all going to have to do in the course of knitting, I would guess, most people are going to need to do increases at times, similarly decreases. Mm -hmm. So decreases in socks, of course, but also in so many different projects, but increases. And I was always clueless when it came to increases, clueless to the point of the fact that I would have to look at your tutorials right. to remind myself how to do it. I then got to the point of remembering the tutorial but forgetting which one I was supposed to do when. So then I developed shorthand. Like make one left, make one right, that sort of thing. Yeah, sort of, yeah. So I developed a shorthand that I would write into the patterns. But now finally I've got to the point of being able to read the knitting to know that if I'm wanting it to go that way Mm. which one to do and mm. if I'm wanting it to mm. go that way mm. which mm. one to do mm. so that always is such a rewarding even to, now you know in another 10 sleeves it'll be monotonous <laughs> but right now it's still really rewarding because I'm still it's still early doors that's the challenge isn't it when you're a jumper knitter the challenge is you don't get to do as many sleeves as you would do socks no. in the same amount of time true and also as well I think that Repetition is a sort of key for getting something in. Because mm. the one thing I'm not concerned about, because, you know, you'll help me through, I hope, again. On the Radari, it was the finishing, it was the closing up of under the sleeves. Yes. And those sort of elements. It was great to do that on the Radari. I loved it. Kate did the first one I watched, I did the second one, and you were there just to make sure I didn't mm. do anything stupid. And I think we should do the same thing again this mm. time. You do the first one, I'll watch, mm. and then we'll move on to the second one. It's those sorts of elements which I suppose I'm just frustrated that I'm still really not confident of. But you don't get to do them often enough, I think, do you? No. Like you say, you know, you, the finishing on a, a garment. Garments are, you know, they're large projects, aren't they? Yeah. And you might do, you know, a lot, I know a lot of people are very prolific with these things, but maybe you might do two or three garments a year. Yeah. That's not really much practice, is it, it, on those little techniques? Such an important thing. you know. Finishing, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can absolutely. knit with great, you know, skill all the way through, and then if you mess up the finishing, mm. you're sort of stuffed. But, though, I find myself, as you know all too well, I find myself disengaging emotionally with a project when I start to not get, do the things which need to be done to get it to yeah, its finishing yeah, point. Yeah, it doesn't let me do anything normally. You know, it's like, I'll, I'll like, do you want me to do it? no. Because you've got to learn, haven't you? But you have to counterbalance that with allowing someone to show you. Mm. Otherwise, that's when you make mistakes. And th there's nothing worse, I think, than making a sort of cataclysmic mistake right at the end. Just no. thinking back to the whole clay court when you, you were cutting it out the middle and how nerve-wracking mm -hmm. that whole mm -hmm. process was. Oh, my goodness. I didn't enjoy that. I mean, talk about a... It's not a niche... Well, I suppose it is a niche skill. Well, I know a lot of people do ste have steaked garments because, you know, traditionally, a colour work, like a colour work cardigan would be worked in the round and then you steak it. 
because it's much easier to work colour work in the round, obviously, than back and forth. Yeah. So that's just how it would be done. So I think for a lot of people, it's probably second nature. If you maybe grew up in that environment where that kind of sweater was very common, yeah, it would be a you know a, a normal thing for you to do. But it could be that you've never done that. So it. It's a scary thing to cut your knitting because oh, it is. yeah, it just it's, it goes against everything that you know that going on in your head. Yeah, but we did it and it was successful. And it's never come apart. It's never come apart. So winner. So it's the sleeve to the lovely Alexander. The and you've, body's you've already done. You've done the body, done. haven't yes. you? So I'll, the next time this I, is nearly finished. Yeah. The next time you see anything with regards to the Alexander, I'll be you know getting through the second sleeve. The second sleeve, and then looking forward to. Getting Joining on with the body around, yeah. because the the color work at the top is different too. Right. It, it looked different, and and that's what drew me to the project. So I'm sort of looking forward to to getting mm. into that body. Mm. It feels great though on, and I have found that different uh, colorways feel different in oh, the little opie. Right. So that's cool. Mm, this feels really really nice on. Oh, so right, it's okay. going to be. I'm looking forward to having it. Maybe the dyeing process is different, Maybe. causing it, yeah. My next colour work jumper yes. is going to be, I think, something for you mm. and is going to be in superwash. Gosh. Which wow. we've established that Kay would really like something in superwash. Not necessarily superwash. But just, just not scratchy. Not scratchy. That doesn't need to be superwash at all. No. No. So that's going to be exciting because... My next project is another jumper, and I'll soon be finishing that. And when that's finished, it'll be time to cast on right. something new. Right, okay. What else is on your needles? Right, my next project is another new thing. And this came about... I was doing some dyeing recently, just playing about in the dye pots. Um, I was coming up with the new colourway, actually, that you'll see today. And at the same time, I wanted to just create another colourway that I just had in my head with these three dye colours and it came actually came out nothing like I was expecting. You know the colours that I use and I, I probably will create this colourway at some point in this year's series but the colours I used you would never, I personally would never guess in a million years that these were the colours that I'd used to create this colour and when I looked at it in the skein I instantly thought of the series Lost. Me and Bryony are watching Lost, we've been watching it for a while now. Me and Dan have watched it before years ago, can't, I can't remember much about it other than it being a bit confusing but um, I, th I just thought Bryony would like it and she's absolutely obsessed by it. We're on series four now and we're into the realms of time travel so that's fun. But it is just really fun. At times it's incredibly confusing and I'm like literally lost in Lost. I'm like, what is going on? But most of the time it's just really enjoyable. The characters are great, the acting's great. It's just crazily bonkers. <laughs> so, I, you know, this colourway came out of the, the dye pot and I thought of Lost and I showed it Bryony. I said, does this make you think of Lost? And she went, oh, it does. I said, right, I'm going to knit you a pair of socks. So this is the colour. And I had to, oh, look, it's in a massive round ball because my ball winder, which you can see up here, I've got the Knit Pro wooden one. Can you see up there? And one of the, the big band, kept it kept flying off. I think it had just got stretched and I'm always careful with it. I always remove it after every time I've wound a skein. The thing is though, but, every time you pull it on. Yeah, off, it's just stretching it a bit. It's just going to so, happen. It wasn't it kept expensive, flying was it off. a new one? No, no, no. It just kept flying off. But I was just annoyed because I wanted to wind this yarn and I couldn't use my ball winder. I, had to, I put it on the Swift and wound it by hand. It's not really a great trauma, is it? <laughs> uh, I've got a new one now, so all is fine. Um, but yeah, and it's sparkle as well. So these are the colours. So it's come out with this sort of vivid green, a sort of... I don't know, a reddish, rusty reddish, and then it's got these sort of golden overtones. Oh, and I just love it. So I decided to, when I said to her, oh, do you want some socks? And she's like, yeah, I want socks. I thought, oh, I need a mini for the heels and toes. So 
the next time I dyed yarn, I thought, right, what I'm gonna try is dyeing up a mini using exactly the same colors that I used for the yarn, but I used a different technique and see what color I get. I wanted just a dark color. I was thinking of the smoke monster thing. You know, if you've ever watched Lost, you know what I mean. The mysterious, noisy smoke thingy. So I thought, I just want a dark color. So I used a different technique and ended up with this fabulous brown. I say brown, but if you look at it carefully, you can see the undertones of the reds and the greens sort of glowing through. And I was just really happy with this. I only did one little mini, but I love it. And I used exactly the same colors as in this skein. And isn't that amazing? You will find when you're dyeing yarn, if you put too many colors into a colorway, you'll ultimately get brown at the end of it. So I knew that, I'd got that knowledge and I knew, I thought, right, if I just keep layering these colors, I think I'll get a brown at the end of it. Cause that's just what happens. And I did, and I love it. And I think they just go really nicely together. It is a more sort of autumnal colorway. So I'll probably leave it till a little bit further on in the series to show. But the other thing I did when I was dyeing this as a little experiment was I thought, normally I do things to counteract the flashing business and pooling but I thought I'm not going to do that I'm just going to dye it and just see what happens you know and if it flashes a bit that's fine and actually thinking of the theme now the swirliness kind of matches and it has done a bit of flashing now I know what you're all saying you're all like but you hate the flashing you know I'm trying to get over it but in this in this instance you know, I wanted to experiment with it and I wanted to see what it would look like if I did kind of nothing to stop, to break up that possible sort of regularity you get. But I absolutely love it. So look, you, oh, look at that. <laughs> see, to it's, me that just looks striped. It's making me laugh, but I, I do really like it. See, I do not think, I would not describe that as random flashes no, and pools. No, it's That's swirling. got a stripe coming down it. It's swirly striping, which just fortuitously, I think works out perfectly for the theme. You know, Bryony saw it and she's like, oh, it's like the smoke swirling in the jungle of what the would smoke be annoying? monster. I, I get it when, just hold it up again. If like that stopped halfway yeah, through yeah, and then yeah, picked up like yeah. down here and then it was like yeah. slightly thicker or slightly thinner that's like the same swirly stripe it yeah. is and I've done I'll put it on a sock blocker actually because I've put in my butterfly heel when I started to see on the leg what was happening here I thought well do you know what I'm going with it I'm embracing the swirliness and I'm going with it and I want to maintain that through the sock so I didn't want to put in a heel flat because I knew that that would then mess with the existing way that this is knitting up so I thought right perfect I'll put in my butterfly heel and it looks great actually Bryony's um, I've worn socks using this heel this heel is in my lattice topped socks pattern and you can you could use it top down or toe up it would work equally as well so look it's kind of cool, isn't it? I really like it. And, you know, like I said, I am trying to get over this. You know, I like, I do like this. My issue with the whole flashing and pooling, it's more when you get just big blocks of a colour, you know, stuck in the middle of something. That's when I don't really That's like That's when it, it looks like it's just being dumped on. That's right. This, oh, we'll just dump, this looks dump, like a striped right, sock, it doesn't it? It yes. kind of looks like a striped sock. Yes. And the heel is great. You know, I find this butterfly heel really great. It fits really nicely. I really love knitting it. So if you want to have a go at this heel, like I say, it's in my lattice top socks pattern. And you could do it bottom up as well. The heel would work equally as well. Toe up as top down. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really, really enjoying knitting these socks. And you can see I'm using DPNs for these as well. Because I thought, right, these are gonna be lost socks. So really I need to use wooden needles because if I was on the lost island, I would only have access to wood, wouldn't I? To create my own needles if I got to that desperate situation. So I'm gonna use wooden DPNs and I'm loving the DPNs again. 
but I'm, what I'm really enjoying is switching between Magic Loop and DPNs. You know, some projects I want to do Magic Loop and some I prefer DPNs. This one is definitely DPN love. These are Knit Picks Sunstruck. I love these needles. They're just like the, um, not, yeah, Knit Picks Sunstruck, but they're just like Knit Pro symphonies or harmonies they're really exactly the same but they're just the natural colored wood and i prefer that to the darker needle because i think it limits i you know i wouldn't want to knit this which is slightly dark color with that darker needle having the lighter needle is for me you know it works really well so i'm just really really loving these i only cast these on Saturday I think I cast I waited and cast them on when we were watching Lost at the weekend I said to Bryony oh right Lost's on I'm gonna cast your socks on and there we go so hopefully I'd like to get these done fairly quickly because I know we should love to wear them whilst watching Lost her favorite character if anyone's interested is oh who is her favorite character Hurley. no it's not Hurley she loves the smoke monster no she loves Ben Linus actually he's horrible isn't he and he's not a nice person, but his character is great. She loves the character. She likes Sawyer. Oh, she loves Jin and Sun, the Korean couple. They're adorable. She loves them. So, yeah. Can I show my jumper now? Yes, you can. Uh, I was just excited, and I'll tell you why. Kate, yes. you can answer the question, and I know what you're going to say. And okay. it's so frustrating because I've been enjoying the tension. The tension? Yes. Look. What, tension as in... No, yarn chicken. Knitting tension. Yarn chicken. Oh, oh my gosh. So I have th that amount of stitches to go. Right. And pull it out. I've got loads, haven't I? There's enough there. Oh, no. There's enough. I was We've hoping got... you were going to say, oh, it's going to be close. Well... There's more than enough, isn't there? Yeah. So you've got about... And I'm carrying... Oh, it's only that... I'm carrying stitches. Oh, you'll be fine. Yeah. But oh. that, that's quite cool, isn't it? That you don't have to break into another skein. Yeah, it is, but I've been really enjoying the like. <laughs> <laughs> is he going to make the it? The tension of yeah. the yarn chicken. I'd even got another ball already. I was like, oh, he's going to need to add something. But no, he isn't. It is the anniversary. Woohoo! Wow, you're near the end, aren't you? I am. I'm well into the decreases. I haven't finished this yet. And the reason being is... I'll show you next time. I started quite a challenging colour work project over the last few weeks, which as I say, I'll show you next time. I haven't made a massive amount of progress yet because it's fingering weight. Mm. Uh, but this is another colour work jumper. So it's much in the same vein, the theme. It's fabulous. As what I just showed you before. And I have to say, I like the Alexander more than I like the anniversary. And I've only knitted oh, the sleeve and the body. This is the anniversary. This is the anniversary. I think it's fine. I look fine. I think it's fabulous. What I, do you mean fine? I don't know. Oh, you'd look great on Shetland. I'm watching these Shetland series at the moment on BritBox. It's great. I've never watched it before. I'm really enjoying it. That's good. Oh, you'd look marvellous on stood on Shetland on a misty morning wearing that, wouldn't you? It is a lovely sort of motif at the top there, but I don't know. I just feels slightly feminine. Get on with you. And it is a unisex jumper, as are the majority yeah, of her designs, yeah, yeah. to be honest. It's completely but unisex. It is completely unisex, but I don't know, it looks a bit florally, and I don't know. It doesn't look florally. I think it looks um, more snowflakey than florally. I mean, don't get me well, wrong, not ladies and gentlemen, I have no problem at all with wearing feminine stuff. <laughs> it isn't, well, I think, it, I mean, when you look at the cuffs as well, yeah. Hold it all together. It's let lopey, of course. Yeah. And it, it's been a, a joy. It's been a joy to knit all yeah. the way through. My it's a great colour for you. It'll yes. really suit you. I think it's lime grass with the green. Yeah. We, we had an issue with the, uh, as you may recall, if you watch past episodes, we had an issue with the sleeves, yeah. with the colour work fitting, but I have a feeling that the colour work would have fitted right. if I just adopted the same approach that you realised oh, with this. Oh, right, okay where you oh, right. you start it at one point, yeah. you then get to a repeat, you knit through the repeat. X number of times. And then you come back yeah, yeah, yeah. and you knit the start of it again. But you don't knit you don't knit the start from the start point, you knit from the beginning of the chart across. See it doesn't yeah. say that in the You pattern. might you you might not have I, I didn't look at that with you. You just said it didn't fit and then worked out something else. Well it so. didn't fit because the, the reading the instructions 
and the stitches, yeah, yeah. which I was being taught, and I take things very literally, it did not fit. Right, okay. Just the same as this not fitting. But, and then but I'm you telling, made it work. Well, I did because I picked a, I picked another motif from, yeah, from the, the choices. From the child's which one, did wasn't fit. it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But it doesn't matter. So did the child sleeve just for me. <laughs> but yes, making good progress into sharp decreases right now. I've done about two or three sets of decreases and I'm going to get into much sharper decreases, I think, on the next round. So who knows? Next time you see it, it may well be close to or off the needles. Brilliant. What else is on your needles? Right, so the last thing I've been working on, I've actually paused this project and I'll tell you why, but... These socks, it's a pair of pro socks, and these socks were my Christmas Eve cast on this year, last year. Um, we'd, I decided, or we decided, that we'd run a little Christmas Eve cast on in our patron private Facebook group this year. And lots of you joined in, it was great fun. So I cast on a pair of socks and I decided on, did I show you these? Like, no, I can't have shown you these last time, can I? Because it was way before Christmas Eve. <laughs> So no, I didn't, but maybe I showed you the yarn. But I decided to use this yarn from Beehive Yarns, which I just purchased recently, and it's in the Tacky Tree. If you don't know what that means, I mean, maybe, you, I mean, everybody in the UK understands what it means by tacky. If you say something's tacky, it means it's like in bad taste or, you know, that, that kind of thing. So yeah, Tacky Tree. I'm all for a tacky Christmas tree. And it's this gorgeous, bright pink with red and purple and green flashes. Gorgeous. And I've knit a whole sock. Oh, and I'm using a mini just for my stash. I think this mini was from an advent calendar from Down Sheepy Lane a few years ago that I got. What, you mean the one that you forgot you'd ordered? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were too embarrassed to message her to one. say, did I order yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I don't even know if she's dying actually currently. But yeah, I just thought these two went lovely together. So I've knit a whole sock. So here's my sock. Oh, isn't it lovely? You probably can't tell, but there is a, there you go. There's a stitch pattern on there. I thought it would be fun just to create a little textured stitch pattern. And I, I posted in our Facebook group a few days before Christmas Eve and said, I'm gonna be using this stitch pattern. I put the chart up there. And if anyone else wants to use it, free, you know, feel free. It's just knits and pearls, but I, you know, shared it with with everyone, and a few people did do the same stitch pattern, which is fun. And I, so I cast on here, 64 stitches. So I cast on and did two rounds of the contrast. I love the way that looks. I think when you've got a nice bold contrast colour, I love doing just a little pop of the contrast there. And then just a standard sock, you know, just straightforward sock, heel flap and turn. It's a French turn on that one, because it decreases. And then I've used that gorgeous maroony colour for the toe. And I finished this. I did finish it before the end of the year. And then I didn't really want to cast on the second one because we'd gone past Christmas. And I'd kind of lost that feeling of wanting to knit Christmas socks. I do very rapidly lose that Christmas feeling once we're past Christmas. So I thought rather than rush, you know, rather than forcing myself to cast on the second sock straight away, I'm not gonna do that, you know, and I would normally because I don't like leaving things unfinished. But I've decided just to pop this in a bag and I usually start feeling festive when it's hot. <laughs> because you know it's just a nice thought to think of cold things so i'll probably pick this up in the summer and knit but even the other if you sock. don't and you picked it back up in december even if i pick it back up in december matter, does no it? i mean even if i wait till christmas eve this year does not matter and knit the other one it doesn't matter and i'm fact, i am trying be cool. to be more chilled about things yeah you can tell you know i'm knitting with yarn that's a little bit swirly um popping this in a project bag and leaving it unfinished for a while until, because I, I want to knit it when I'll enjoy it at its peak, you know? And I really, really enjoyed knitting it. The yarn is just beautiful, isn't it? Gorgeous. So this is just getting popped away in a project bag. I've got my instructions in there. I wrote them all out because I know I'll forget. So I've, I've detailed everything that I've done. Detailed? Detailed. She's detailed. <laughs> 
detailed. That sounds like I've been in the bathroom yes. doing some work, yes. doesn't it? I even put, I think I knit these on, I didn't write that, but I'm certain I knit the, yes, I knit these on Magic Loop. So all the instructions are in there and I'm just popping them in a bag and I'm gonna pick them up when I know that I will really enjoy them. I did steal 20 grams of yarn out of the middle of this for my pink granny square collection because I thought, oh, I've got to have this. I know I said I was only gonna use actual mini skeins, changed my mind. Because <laughs> I'm allowed to do that, aren't I? Because I just thought I've gotta have a square of that, haven't I? Beautiful, so I did steal 20 grams out of the middle, but there's still plenty. Folks, last autumn, our very first season, our first full season actually, of my favorite colorways came to an end. And it's fair to say that we were inundated with messages from people, oh my goodness, <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> when is it coming back? Well, finally, that day has come. Yes, it's had a little bit of a spit and polish. Yeah. We brushed up its edges just a little bit, but it's still the same series that we know you love. Finally, it's time to dive back into those amazing potion books as we join Kay for another season of My Favourite Colourways. Over the last seven years, I have created hundreds of gorgeous colourways. Hidden away in my library is the little book that contains nearly all my secrets. These are the recipes for creating all of my colourways and in this series I'll be showing you some of my absolute favourites. I'll be taking you from undyed skein to finished colourway because it's time for us to discover Welcome everybody to a brand new series of my favourite colourways. I'm so excited to be back in the kitchen and back in the dye pots and I'm even more excited because in this series we are going to be dyeing up some I don't want to say old colours, some existing colours that I've dyed before, but we're also going to be doing some brand new colourways that I'm going to create especially for this series. Now the first new colourway I've actually created for this very first episode and the reason I've done that is because we're into a new year now and I think we should just start off the new year with a bright fun skein of yarn and it, in it incorporates two methods actually of dyeing. I think I've shown you both of these before but maybe it's slightly different with this one um, but this colourway uses four dyes and if you are a fan of pink then this colourway is definitely for you. And I think you all know that I am a huge fan of the colour pink, so I just had to start off the series with my favourite, my very, very favourite colour. So this colourway I've actually called Hubba Bubba. Now, can any, any of you out there, I'm sure you can remember, and I think you can actually still get it, the, uh, it used to be, we used to call it bubbly gum, not chewing gum, because it, especially hubba bubba it was more of a bu bubbly gum that's what we used to call it and um, you know it's a great big round chewing gum and it's pink in color it always was pink in color I've not had it for donkey's years but I actually looked looked it up um, and you, the box itself this was after I dyed the color actually but the box itself that a sort of big quantity comes in is pretty much the exact colours that have died today, so I was absolutely thrilled. So Hubba Bubba it is, it's bright, it's fun, and it's fantastically pink. So let's get straight into it and see exactly what we're gonna need to dye up our lovely yarn. So what we're going to need to dye up our fantastic hubba bubba yarn. Right, so first of all we're going to need the yarn obviously. Now this time I'm just going to be dyeing one skein of yarn. I've got a skein of fingering weight here. It's, um, 
it's an 8515 blend, I believe. 85 superwash merino, 15% nylon, and it's about 400 meters. So just a fairly standard skein of fingering weight yarn. It's superwash. I'm just staying at one skein this time because the technique I'm gonna use, there's a couple of techniques actually, but I just find that you get a better result if you've only got one skein of yarn in the pot. And we're not commercial dyers here, you know, we're not really concerned about numbers and, you know, getting as many done as possible. We're just in our own kitchens, just doing a little bit of dyeing for ourselves. So one skein of yarn is all I'm going to be using today. And it doesn't have sparkle in it. It's just um, straightforward yarn, but you can use sparkle yarn if you prefer. We've then got our usual pan to do our dyeing. I always use these stainless steel sort of casserole pans they are. I've got my bowl for soaking and rinsing and I'll just say as I always say you know these items are only used for dyeing yarn they're not used for anything else. We've then got um, a measuring spoon. We're gonna need our measuring spoon today and I always use a one eighth of a teaspoon. These are like scientific measures, I think, but it's the one eighth of a teaspoon I'm gonna be using. A couple of paint brushes we will need for today's yarn. Our mordant, which as always is citric acid. In my case, this is my preferred method of fixing the dye to the yarn. We've got a mask and our trusty big spoon, some old tea towels, rubber gloves, I've got my dye book, and then the last thing are the dye colours. Today I'm going to be using all landscape dyes. Now what I'll do is I'll tell you the dye colours, but then I'll tell you the type of colour it is. So if you can't get landscape dyes, if you can only get Dharma dyes for example, or Jacquard, then you should be able to find something that's a good match, you know, similar sort of match once I've described what the colour is. So we've got four colours. The first one is Galar, which is a hot pink. So you just basically want the hottest pink that you can find. I think with Dharma, there might be one called Hot Fuchsia, or maybe that's Jacquard, I can't remember. But in any case, you just need a hot pink, but I've got Galar. And then I've got another pink, but this one is a more purplish pink. It's called Wild Raspberry and it is very much a purplish pink. We've then got plum, which as the, the name actually says, it is a plum colour. So imagine the colour of plums. It's that kind of deep, almost burgundy-ish, purplish colour. And then the final one is kingfisher. Now, again, this describes the colour really well. Imagine the colour of a kingfisher. It's that very quite a vivid blue, a lot of turquoise in there, but with a hint of green as well. So anything that you can find that's sort of in that ballpark. If you can't find that, then I think turquoise, a turquoise blue would work equally as well. But this one does have some green in there as well. It's that kind of blue with a tiny bit of green of those wings of a kingfisher. So that's the four colours we're going to be using today and everything else we're going to be needing. So what we need to do now is soak our yarn. Okay, so in my bowl here, I've got just some warm water from the tap and I've put in about a scoop of the citric acid. I'm not sure, I'll show you the scoop. I'm not sure the sort of volume of this scoop. This is what comes with the actual acid. I guess it's maybe around a tablespoon, I'm not sure, but there's just like a scoop in there. So we're gonna pop in our yarn. So I've got this on one of my removable cable ties. I'm just gonna drop it in just help it into the water and let this have a soak for about half an hour. We just want to get the citric acid right into the fibres and soak the yarn through. So I tend to sort of get it in, lift it up and then just give it a good old wiggle around and just let that hang out for half an hour or so while we get everything ready to dye our yarn. Thank you. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is heat up some water. I've got in my pot, I've got it only about a third full, I would say, and I've put in another scoop of the citric acid into here, and that water is just heating up now. So I'm going to put our yarn into here just whilst it's heating up. So I'm just going to grab it out of the soaking bowl, squidge it out. And then before I put it in, I'm just going to give it a little wiggle just to release the sort of clumpiness of the strands and then pop it in. And as it goes in, I'm just going to move it all around like this so that I'm getting as much of the yarn kind of exposed on the surface of the water as I can. And I think I might just have a bit too much water in there, so I'm just going to go in and scoop a bit out. Yeah, that's better. The water just wants to be just covering the yarn. I don't know if you can see, but like the strands are sort of hovering on the surface. It's not it's not submerged is what I want to say so that's how it needs to be and you can see I've really distributed the yarn all around to get as much surface area as I can so I'm just going to let that come up to temperature now it's not far off actually as soon as it starts to show any kind of steaming and little bubbles starting to pop just turn the burner down just to keep it hot rather than boiling we don't want it on a rolling boil So you can see, well, you might not be able to see, but that's very steamy now. It's really nice and hot. So we're ready to put in the first color. This is a really fun dye method. Sometimes when you dye in, you feel like you've got to be a little bit hesitant with your colors because you never quite know what's gonna happen. And I always err on the side of less is more. But with this method, you can really just sort of have a bit of fun with it and dump it in and it's a really bright, vivid color when it goes in. And that I think is just great. So we're starting with the galah. I've got my eighth of a teaspoon. And I'm going to scoop up about, mm, it's sort of like a, a flat eighth. If I just tap that across, you can see it's not a full eighth of a teaspoon. You don't want it heaped up. It's just sort of a flat eighth like that. And all we're going to do is quite liberally just go across haphazardly, don't do it in any regular fashion, we just want haphazardly across that yarn and then straight away use your spoon and just push it down a little bit. Not a lot, just push it down as you can see just a little bit. Now what that's going to do, you can see some areas here we've got speckles and some areas we've got it much more concentrated and that's what we want. We need to just let that set, but it won't take long. The water's nice and hot, and this dye actually, this, the landscape dyes, does, I find it sets really sort of fairly, quite quickly. I think it's actually got a mordant in it, I believe. I think it's actually got everything in there you need to dye, but I always add more anyway. So I'm just gonna literally leave that for a couple of minutes, and then we're gonna move it and just repeat that process. So I'm now just going to move the skein and do that again with that hot pink. Now when you lift it up you might find there's a bit of pink residual dye in the water. That's absolutely fine. You can see it's just got a bit of colour there. Because if we actually dye the rest of the skein a very pale pink, that's absolutely fine. We kind of want that to happen in a way. So just move the skein as I like to do, just to keep it random and then pop it back in. As we do that, the yarn will absorb that remained, uh, remaining pink dye that's in there. And you can see we have now got, it's sort of dyed the rest of the skein, a very pale pink. This is how we're gonna get lots of tones. So just move that all around again. And we're gonna do that again. We're gonna put some more pink in there. 
So back to our die pot and about the same amount again, all across as random as you like, haphazardly, quite quickly and then just gently push it down to create the darker areas and the lighter areas. There we go. Lid on because we've done with that colour now. Wipe our spoon. So again I'm just going to leave that for a couple of minutes to let it absorb that next layer then we're going to move on to the next colour. Okay, that's had a few minutes now just to set, so we're just going to give it a little shifty around again. And again, look, there's a little bit of the residual pink, that's fine. Now, as I move this this time, I'm kind of going to turn the skein as well, just so that we get the inside dyed as well as the outside. Drop it back in. Oh, I didn't move it a lot, did I? Let's just move it. There we go. Drop it back in, and as we do that, that's going to soak up that last bit of the pink that's in there. Make sure we move it around as much as we can. And you can see now we've got some areas that are really quite intensely pink and others that are a more delicate pink. So we've got a lovely sort of tonal speckliness going on there. So now it's time to put in the wild raspberry. So this is going to give some depth to the colour. At the minute, that's just that one shade and it would be really pretty, you know, if we finished the yarn there, it would be lovely. But we, I want to add a bit of depth to the colour. So this is what the wild raspberry does. Did. Galar. So maybe about a half of an eighth. There we go, exactly the same as we did before. All the way across. Lovely. And again, push it a little bit. And you can see, I hope you can see actually, this one is a much more purpley pink. That's going to give us some really nice darker tones in the yarn. There we go. Again, leave that a few minutes just to set and we're going to repeat that with that colour. That's at about five minutes now soaking. So we're ready now to do some speckling. So we're gonna give it a little move. And at the same time, I might just flip it over. We're gonna flip it again anyway, but let's just do that. And you can see we've just got a bit of leftover pink in there. That's no problem. Because as we sort of move it around in here, it's going to carry on absorbing that last bit of colour. So we've now got, if you can see here, if I show you this section, you can see how we've got those lovely darker tones and then we've still, underneath, we've still got some lovely shades of a sort of paler pink and then we have got some vivid pink as well. It's really pretty. So let's move that around and do a bit of speckling. And I'm going to do that again because you can see as I've done that actually nearly all of that pink has gone. There we go. So the remaining two colours I'm going to speckle in with the brush and this is where we do need to be quite delicate because we, well, now what we want is on top of all that lovely variegation and lovely toning, toning in the yarn, we want to add some tiny little specks of the blue and then also the plum but the plum what the plum does is actually just give us some slightly darker spots of the same colours we've got in here. The blue lifts it and adds a little bit of contrast. Kingfisher. 
So I've got two brushes here. I'll move the colours out of the way we've dealt with and just bring in the ones we've got left. So we're going to start with the Kingfisher. What I like about the landscape dyes is it's much more granular. Can you see that? I hope you can see just how granular that formula, formula is. One or two of the shades are more of a powder, but generally I find that they've got this granular consistency, which is great for speckling, because you don't tend to get clumping like you can get with a powder. So what I'm going to do is keep hold of my pot and just scoop some up on my brush like this. Tap it, because I don't want masses on there. And then I'm just going to very gently go around the skein, just dropping. Can you see how it's just dropping little bits of the dye? Just to create some tiny, nice, you know, just little specks of colour. So go steady. And you can see that blue now on there. Go all over. And you can do this as much or as little as you want, but I tend to, when I'm speckling, I find that less is definitely more. I want to just go over all of the areas, but keep it nice and delicate. That's probably about right. A bit more over there. It's probably everything off I brush now. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to pop that one down, put the lid on, and I'm going to go over to my plum and do the same thing with the plum. And again, look, we've got this lovely granular formation. So I always tend to scoop it up and then knock it off because that stops you having too much on your brush. And then go over and again, just speckle all over. You won't see this one as vividly as you saw the blue but it does go on and it does add a little extra depth. I'm gonna have a bit more of that. There you go, can you see it dropping? You maybe can. So just go over the surface. And that should be fine. So I am going to let that set now for five minutes maybe and I'm going to turn the skein as we've been doing and then just repeat that process of speckling. Okay, so that is our dyeing completed. I'll, I will now just bring that, bring the temperature up a little bit and just bring it to the sort of simmering point. As soon as it hits that point, turn the heat off and then I'm just gonna pop it outside to cool. Okay, so that's our lovely hubba bubba all dyed up and it's outside just cooling off. So join me in part two where we're going to bring that in, we're going to rinse it, we're going to get it dry and then we're going to take a look at it. And also I've added in something extra this series just to help you visualise how the yarn is going to knit up. So that's all in part two, so I will see you soon. has been returned to the universe. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it just doesn't feel right when we're not joining you every so often for... To dye a little bit of yarn. A dive into the dye pots. Yes. It's like there's certain things that you need in your life. For us, it's knowing that our mechanic <laughs> is in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever we go for a walk, we sometimes walk past, walk past the our garage. garage. And you may well recall 
the, the, the name of our, um, our mechanic is called Carl. And his wife sometimes watches the show. She does. Jan, if you're watching, hello. Give him a jab in the Carl, ribs. Is, it, is Carl asleep? Because <laughs> Carl's normally asleep. Jan's normally Wake watching in bed. And yeah, we, we uh, sally forth past his garage. We do, we do. And if his car's there. we see his there, car, we're like, ah. Oh, <laughs> everything's right everything's with the fine. world. Carl's like, my car's going in for a service next week, actually. It is, yeah. Service and it's yearly MOT, my very old car. Yeah. So, yes, it's just great. Yeah. That, and, and what a just gorgeous colour to start that the brand it's new season. fabulous. Talk about pink. It's right here, I will show you. And later on. Later on. And it could not have been more perfectly named. You know, you can see now. Yeah. Hubba Bubba. Hubba Bubba. Yes. Who didn't it. love a bit of Hubba Bubba? I used to have it back in the day. Yeah. No, it was bubbly that we called it. Bubbly gum. I said that, I think, on the... No, people called it bubbly. Bubbly, yeah. They didn't say bubbly gum. You got any bubbly? Yes. Yeah. And it was chewing gum. Bubbly... It's, it's chewing gum, yeah, yeah. Well, chewing, chewing gum was the other stuff. these days. Chewing gum was the other stuff, wasn't it? Well, bubbly, you can blow massive bubbles That's with. right. That's you can't the so much with chewing gum, can you? It's not, you're not supposed to. Are you not? No, no. It's designed to be chewed. Bubble gum is designed to for be blown blowing blowing, for blowing bubbles. Yeah. Now... It, 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 Hubba Bubba was always much nicer for me than chewing gum because it always had yeah. so much more flavour. It did. It was so it was strawberry, like, strawberry flavoured, wasn't it? There was a few different flavours. Oh, was there? Yeah. I only had the strawberry one, I think. There's a few different flavours, and my goodness, it was like a, yeah, yeah, it was like really. an explosion it in did, your mouth. It did. It did. But the best, you see, I don't think it, now this wasn't designed to, for, for bubbles. But do you remember when we were sent? By Saratoga Knitting. Saratoga Knitting is another podcast. She is. Does she still? Yes. Yes. Good. Well, her lovely daughter. Yes. Who also used to have a podcast when she lived in Japan. Japan. She yeah. sent us some sweets, yeah, and some yeah. of those sweets was Japanese chewing gum. Yeah, yeah. And this is designed to be swallowed. Oh, really? No, no. It's designed we to be it. swallowed. Did we swallow it? We did. It was lovely. <gasps> That's brave, isn't it? You could feel it breaking down after a while because oh, in Japan, right, okay. it's and to be honest, I agree. That's right. It's seen as uncouth to spit anything out of your mouth. Well, it should be everywhere. In all honesty, shouldn't yes, it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So and it, that was gorgeous. Yeah. To be yeah. fair, a lot of those Japanese Ooh, sweets. Oh, I love Japan. I'd love to go to Japan. I really I've been. would. I know you've been. It was marvelous. Oh. I love the, the, the order and the cleanliness and the... We sometimes oh, talk... I love all that. And I love all the stationery and the food and the... Oh. We sometimes talk, specifically, we actually spoke about this on our radio show recently, we talk about personal space mm. and how when you're out walking, sometimes people mm. completely mm. invade your personal mm. space. When I was in Japan, I remember being stood, getting on a tube, yeah. and it was packed... And not one person at any point invaded my personal yeah, space. At yeah. no point did I feel claustrophobic oh, or... Amazing, they're amazing. Just, because oh, respect fantastic. and order yeah. is like, it's the order oh, of the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've got to love it. Love it. The question, though, on all of your lips is, how is this yarn going to turn out? Is it going to flash and pull? <laughs> is it? We'll find out oh, later on in the show. <laughs> because right now, she's got lots to show you. Oh, yes. Kay Jones, what's off your needles? Before I show you that, I just want to mention what I'm wearing because I know I wore this. What's when... off somebody else's needles? Yes, because I wore this when I was doing the dyeing, and to be honest, I've pretty much worn this since I received it. it was, this was a gift from a lovely friend at Christmas, and I just literally have been wearing it non stop. Um, this is a cowl by Isolde Teague, and it's called. Uh, Poser or Poser, P-O-Z-A. I hope it's not Poser. And, well, it wouldn't be Poser, that would be double Z, wouldn't it? That's a terrible name, then. I know, Poser, you see. Someone who's a bit of a Poser here. That, that you, was when we were at school. Oh, it was. Back, yeah, definitely in 80s things. He's always a right old Poser, that one. It He's means... a right old Poser. Give me some Hubba Bubba. <laughs> oh, come on, 80s. Oh, I wish I was still that. Don't, don't get me started. In a pencil skirt. A pencil skirt, no, a rara skirt, or really long skirts were in long pencil skirts. Yeah, that's what I meant. Was in when I was in school. I had a long grey pencil skirt. When I was at school, the, the the pencil skirts were so tight the girls could yeah, barely walk. No, going upstairs was they always like an Darryl issue. like Daryl Hannah in Splash. It was always an issue going upstairs in one of those long pencil skirts. And I used to have a long pencil pencil skirt, but then at the back it had a bit of a kick pleat. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. 
All the girls. Let's really, go. bring that back like that. instead of what they wear these days. All the girls. It'll come back. Skirts this long at school. I don't approve. I'm seeing less of that. Are you? Well, that's good. I just wonder if... I don't like that at all. They're not supposed to at school. They wear a uniform and they're not supposed to wear really short skirts. Yeah, but they hitch, to, they hitch, hitch up on the way up. in. They're supposed to be And then when they knee, go in, the teachers get them to... I know, they're supposed to be knee length, but they fold them over at the top. Every single one of the girls does that. Brownie wears trousers. She's not into that at all. But this is the poser. Anyway, this lovely cowl is called Poser, P-O-Z-A. It's sold a Teague. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, it's just beautiful. Oh my goodness. And there are some love decreases, it. aren't there, in this? Yes, because it, you cast on down here, and she's done, oh, tubular cast on everyone. It's cool. It's beautiful. Can you see it? Can you see the tubular cast on? Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous work. And that's a twisted rib, isn't it? Twisted rib going into this fantastic lace pattern. And then you get little sort of arrow lace going. Do you know on. what? That twisted rib oh, transforms it. Looks like a skirt. It does. Don't you think? If that was plain ribbing, it would yeah, look a bit sort yeah. of robust. It's gorgeous. It makes it much more delicate, beautiful, much more refined. Beautiful knitting. Yes. But one thing that she did tell me is that she ran out of yarn and had to shorten the pattern. It's designed for one skein of fingering weight yarn. And I actually went and looked on Ravelry and a lot of people said they ran out of yarn, didn't have enough. So I do think if you want to knit this, I would make sure you had two skeins of the same colour if you want to knit it exactly to pattern because there were a lot of people that said the same thing. So, so. that's the poser. Oh, I'm going to leave it off because it's quite warm in here now. The sun's come out, so I'll leave that off, but love it. What's actually right. off your needles? What's actually off my needles? So I've got two pairs of socks Beautiful. and a cowl. Hey, that's good, isn't it? So I'll show you these socks first. So every year in our advent calendar, Bakery Bear's advent calendar, or that certainly the last three years now I've done this, I've designed a pattern that is included within the advent calendar as a little mystery knit along. So every other day you get a little section of the pattern. This year it was a pair of socks and the pair of socks were called Christmas in the Big Woods. It was inspired by um, Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder and every little section of the socks was inspired by a, a passage within the book. So these are the socks and I knit them, what's it called? Opposites or what, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, well, but, opposites, yeah. Yeah, I'll just show you one. So you can see we've got pink and blue. I dyed this yarn and that was also within the advent calendar. Showing, yes, showing an exclusive, people, my favourite yeah. colourways. <gasps> showing people how they could create these colourways if they wanted to do that. And the blue is Mary's hair ribbons and the pink is Laura's hair ribbons. Because in the book, they each have ribbons for their hair and one has blue, one has pink. So here's the lovely sock. I think it's kind of got like a Christmas stocking feel about it somehow. The leg is much longer than I normally knit, just because I had to have that length to get all the number of patterns in that I needed to, but I actually really love it. Yeah. And Bryony said she really likes long socks, so yeah. she'll be getting these, I'm sure. So there's combinations of sort of lace patterns, texture patterns, there's a little bit of cabling in there, there's some slip stitches. I've tried to include lots of different techniques. And everybody really seemed to love it. You know, I had really, really positive feedback. Everybody's socks look fantastic. It was just a joy. So this is a patron-only pattern. I, I do always get a few people asking me how they can get this pattern. That pattern is available to download yes. immediately yes. for gold and platinum Bakery Bear patrons. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, it forms part of the Platinum Collection, yeah. which is an exclusive collection which Kay designs every year. Yeah. Four patterns come out through the course of the year, and this is the first one for yes. 2022. Yes, so if you wanted to sign up as, like Dan said, a gold or a platinum patron, you would have access to this pattern. If you sign so. up as a platinum patron, you would immediately yeah. have access to 17... Yeah. Exclusive. Exclusive patterns. patterns. Yes. That is mind blowing. It is. You know, as a, as a, as a platinum patron, you're the highest level, so you have access to everything. I'm basically. thinking of the amount of work that's gone into creating oh, a lot of all work. those patterns. You know, these mystery patterns, you know, the last three I've done, now I've done it for three years. I did a pair of socks the first year, a cowl. 
the second year and then another pair of socks this year. And she's already working on this I'm year's. I'm already working on this year's and let me tell you, it's completely different to not anything. Not a pair of socks no. and it's not a cow. No, it's completely <laughs> different to anything I've done before. I'm really, really excited about it. And the yarn I've got to, to knit it with is just the bee's knees and I'm so excited. I'm stopping myself from sort of working on the design because... It's a it is a little bit early in the year and I've got other things I need to do, but I've got it all planned. So that's the first pair of socks. And then the second pair of socks I finished, I'll just put the other one on the blocker. I showed these, I think, last time, but these are also festive themed. And these are my lovely stripy socks. This is yarn from Legacy Fiber Arts and it was in, it was a sock set I got and it's Christmas, whoops, Christmas Vacation sock set so it's themed on the film uh, the Griswolds which we love and we watched this year didn't we yeah fantastic and and it's a pair of socks and what I wanted to do with the mini this time is rather than just use it for heels and toes I wanted to use it in a slightly different way so I worked out how to get stripes in there using all of the mini and I've got maybe three grams left so that worked out really well I could have done a bit more striping but I think that's I was happy with just having that tiny little nugget left I made them I messed up on the cuffs can you see one's longer than the other and it won it, oh, no. I know and it won oh, okay look it bothered me I've sat right next to it and I can't see it bothered me and it still bothers me a bit but one of them's got 18 rounds one of them's got 20 rounds oh, on the rib I look know. just cast it's on another just one. not good enough <laughs> I almost ripped it out I know this sounds ridiculous I was down to I think sort of here when I noticed it and I thought oh I don't know if I can live with that but I decided I had to live with it really couldn't it couldn't justify ripping it out so they're all done and lovely I'm really pleased with those so I'm going to give those to Brian today cool and what else and then is the last needles? thing is the cowl that I was knitting I showed this on the last show I'm, I'm certain I did this was this is the cowl oh how lovely it's gorgeous so this is the Christingle Mingle and I designed this for me and my lovely sort of best knitty friend, I would say, to to Look, knit. Best knitty friend. Yeah. I think you should take out the knitty. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's true actually. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's the end of that. She's fabulous. More the point is, Kay designed it for her best friend. <laughs> yes. Who happens to be a knitter? Yes. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, I sent her as a as an advent gift. I actually gave her. We saw her this year. Actually, we've not seen her for almost three years, and we actually saw her at the beginning of November, which was a joy. So I actually gave her a advent of yarn. I dyed all these yarns myself. They're all mini skeins. So I gave her the exact minis I got. I dyed up two sets of minis, twelve colours, and I wrote out the pattern. I you know typed it all up and gave her the pattern as well. It was obviously fairly blank, the pattern, because it's effectively a mystery knit along for us both. I designed it, but I hadn't knitted it at all. So we kind of worked our way through it, doing a little test knit together, if you like. And I called it Christingle Mingle, because you're mingling all of these lovely colors. And the center section, you get to mingle. You can see it's slightly different here. You get to mingle two speckly yarns and then you go back to the sort of striping. The whole thing works great. And it's got this You gorgeous, were concerned about some yeah, of the bold yeah, colours. Yeah, I well, was. I thought the colours down here were a little bit bold. This no. green, maybe. But actually, I really like it now I look at yeah, it. Yeah, it's perfect. So... I think it wouldn't be as... It, it pops now. Yeah, yeah. Whereas it wouldn't do if it was all like that all the way through. No. I mean, these are my leftovers. Look, I've got a few bits of leftovers. I think what's lovely about it, too, um, is it doesn't draw the eye. Oh, the whole I thing. I think it's lovely. It's great. And I am going to be writing this, well I have written it up already, but I'm going to photograph this and I'm going to get it all written into a pattern. But I'm going to hold off releasing this because it is Christmas themed. It's called Christingle Mingle. And I'm going to release this probably at the beginning of November maybe. Cool for everyone to purchase if they want to knit their own. Beautiful. And I loved it. And you know, both me and my friend knit through the whole thing in December. We both finished it in time to wear it at Christmas and just really loved it. I wanted it just to be simple stocking stitch. 
but you've got something to do because you, you're striping just these lovely one row stripes which you can see better in the more bold colours. And you get to switch speckled yarn and tonal yarn. And I've written, you know, the pattern is written, it tells you exactly how to organise your yarns, exactly the best sort of yarns. It, you know, it's all in there. And it, it was just a joy. And I've I actually wanted to knit another one this year. And I've already got, I bought these recently from the Fibre Fox, lovely UK dyer. And I think I'd like to use these palest, six of these palest colours here with six lightly speckled yarns to create a, you know, a very delicate looking one in very pale colours. So that might be a project for me for this sort of advent season. Gorgeous. So this will be out later in the year, but I absolutely love it. Speaking of lovely yarn, I think it's time that we headed back to Kay yes. and a lovely dye pots to see how the gorgeous hubba bubba is going to turn out. Welcome back everybody to part two of my favourite colourways and we're dyeing up the fantastically pink hubba bubba. Our yarn is now cooled and we're ready to bring it in and give it a rinse and take a look at it. So let's go and grab that skein of yarn and get it into the rinsing pot. So our yarn is now all lovely and cool and you can see we've just got a merest hint of pink in the water which is fine. You do find, or I certainly find, that when you're working with very vivid colours, so like uh, for example turquoise, bright turquoise, bright pink, red, you can sometimes have a little bit of residual dye left in the pot but there's really nothing nothing to worry about anyway. So we now need to give it a rinse so I've got just some lovely wool wash here in my bowl with just some tap warm water. So I'm just going to squidge that out and then just drop it in and just let it have a bit of a hang out and just give it a swish around. What we're doing is we're getting rid of the citric acid and any sort of little residual bits of dye particles that might have been floating around. So that's lovely. The water is lovely and clear, you can see there. So it's nice and set. If you want to, you can leave this having a soak for 10 minutes, you know, go and make yourself a cup of tea while you leave it to have a soak. But you can see there, the water running off is lovely and clear, so we know we've got a good set there. So all we need to do now is give it a nice little squidge to get rid of the excess water and then we need to pop it to dry. Now, the weather today outside is a bit rubbish. It's winter now. So what I will do is I will just pop it in front of a fan in the house and it will dry in probably an hour or so. So that's our beautiful yarn all ready to be dried. Okay, so our yarn is all now beautifully fluffy and dried. I do find that if I dry it in front of the fan in the house, it does seem to fluff it up really nicely. So it's all beautifully dried and ready to be skeined. It looks fantastic. I think actually it's come out a little bit more brighter and a bit more intense than the last time I dyed it. But we'll compare because I've got that to show you in a little bit. So let's just first of all take off the cable tie. And the first thing I always do is just straighten out the skein because it might have got sort of a bit um, twisted in the pot. So just straighten it all out. Lovely. And now we'll have a look at the ties. There's, well, there's four on this skein. So what I'm going to do is I'll leave the one intact, obviously, that's holding the yarn together, that's got the ends. So that one always has four strands coming off it. You can always tell that that's the one we need to leave. 
that's at the top there and then I'll keep one more that's sort of down at the bottom and then I'm going to snip off the other two so it's this one and this one so just grab hold of the tie make sure you've got the tie and not the yarn snip it so I'm just leaving two ties on I find that to be perfectly fine for storage purposes you know and if you were sending it off to to give to someone I don't think that's fine too and now we just need to skein this loveliness up I was just having a look at it and it it's beautifully speckled inside and out which is perfect so now I just need to skein it up seven twists for this one. Oh, it's lovely. And just tuck the ends. Gorgeous. I'll just check it to make sure it's as neat as it can be. That's pretty good. So there we go. So now we can take a little bit of a closer look. Is our finished skein of hubba bubba I love saying that and it's come out beautiful it is actually a little bit more intense and a bit more saturated than the first skein that I dyed up but actually I love this one a bit more than my first one which I'll show you in a second it's so intense the pinks are so vibrant and gorgeous and the speckles have come out lovely we've just got a scattering of those blue delicate blue um, speckles all over it and the plum what the plum does is just adds a sort of bit of further depth to the darker shades of the pink gorgeous absolutely love it so what I actually did when I first dyed this was I decided that it would be fun if I actually knit up some of the yarn so that you could see what it's going to uh, potentially knit up like it depends obviously on the project and your gauge and all of those things so I thought the best thing that I could actually knit would be a pair of my wrist ticklers the wrist ticklers are a free pattern that you can download on Ravelry or Love Crafts it's for a pair of uh, simple wrist warmers and because I'm going to be dyeing up six colours within this series I've figured out how to have three colours on each mitt so every time I dye up a colour I'm going to be knitting another section in my wrist ticklers and then you'll be able to see what it knits up like at my stitch count and gauge so I've got that over here so this was the skein I dyed up initially and you can see it is a bit less saturated than this one but the colours are, you know, they're the same, but just there's a, just a bit less dye I used in this one to this one. But it'll show you how it's going to knit up. So what I did was I cast on, like I said, a pair of um, wrist ticklers and I cast on 64 stitches. That's what the pattern calls for. And I'm using 2.25 millimetre needles. So it's what commonly is used a lot for a pair of socks. So if you knit your socks 64 stitches on 2.25 millimetres, then this is sort of roughly, could change, you know, everybody's gauge is different and everything. But this is sort of what you're going to expect with that colourway. And I love it. You just get this lovely speckled look with the sort of pink tonal background. It's really lovely. So in this mitt, I'll have three colors and then the next one I'll have the other three colors. And I knit this, it felt like I knit this in about five minutes. <laughs> it obviously wasn't, but it felt like that just because I'm, I'm always so excited to see how colorways will knit up. And because this wasn't a brand new one, you know, I'm even more excited and I love it. I just love the way it's knit up. I love the speckles and the distribution of everything. I think it looks fantastic. 
So I will carry on and show you a bit more progress on that every time I dye up a new colour. So that'll be really fun. And oh yeah, I can't wait to see what the mitts will look like and I'll have another pair of wrist warmers to wear when I'm out walking. So there we go. That's, oh, I'm just gonna pick up that again. That's our lovely hubba bubba. I hope you enjoyed that. So get in your dye pots and get dyeing up some happy new year pink yarn. So I will see you back next time for more My Favourite Colourways. Now that's how you get a season started in style, baby. Oh, I've got it here. Gorgeous pinkness. Um, it's all, I'm all about the pink today, aren't I? Pink, yes. pink jumper, pink cowl, I pink have a yarn. Bit of pink too. You've got a little bit of pink on. Oh, loving all that. Yes, here it is. Oh, look at that. It's gorgeous. Oh, I love it. There's so many colours popping out of there. It's beautiful, isn't it gorgeous? Everybody yeah. who loves pink, hopefully, would love this. Oh, I love it so much. Perfect for so many things too, because I could see socks in that. Yes. I could see a really sort of wow shawl. Oh, another cowl. one of those cowls, those poser cowls. But yes. I'd need another bit, wouldn't I? You'd look a right poser in that. A right old poser. But I think actually the perfect choice is something like mitts or wrist tickless. Mm. Wrist tickless because would then be gorgeous. it'll be like such a sort of pop of colour. Oh on yeah. Well, a actually, cold day. you saw I'm knitting a pair of wrist tickless, and that's something that I've added in into this year's dying videos you know just showing you how it's going to knit up and I think for me you know that's a really important thing you know yarn might look beautiful in the skein but how on earth is it going to knit up so that's something extra that I've added in for this year so you'll be able to see exactly how these yarns are going to knit up and you saw with that that this one just knits into a lovely speckly yarn it's really pretty so Gorgeous. Amazing. Kay will be back soon with more of my yes. favourite colourways. And we actually produce all our featured sections within our show. We produce a special edition that's available yeah. to our gold and platinum patrons. And that is available right now. And so are all our previous My Favourite Colourways. Now it's time to get excited. And slightly daunted and a little bit nervous. Because when we see you next time... We're going to be walking the wall. Yes. So don't miss that. It's going to be epic. There's lots of new, start of a new year, lots of new things happening. And one of the big things for us this year is for us to be able to film the season that we want to film, we have a new member of the Bakery Bears family. We do. His name is Stuart. Stuart. Yes. Stuart has joined Kevin. Yeah. And Stuart will be he's, assisting he's, me. He's Kevin's big brother. He is. When the wind gets strong... Stuart takes to the air. Yes. Because what none of you know is that in the filming of the final Walking the Moors, poor Kevin was blown into a tree. Poor fella. At about 60 miles an hour. He was rescued, don't worry, he's fine. I he's had absolutely to. Absolutely fine. You had to climb on the car. I had to and... drive the car <laughs> underneath the tree. I had to drop the back of the car. I had to stand on top of that. I had to get my tripod, my camera tripod, yeah. extend it to its fullest, go on tiptoes, knock him. Thankfully, he landed in a lovely soft bit of grass, and I've flown him since, and he's fine. He's okay. He's, o he's all right. But we can't be having that happen again. No. So, for windy conditions, <laughs> which we're probably going to get... We get out the big guns, and yes. Stuart's the big guns. Yes. So, that's all to come next time. But right now, it's time for the Andy Bits. Andy Bits. That would not have been right. If you'd missed that, if you'd missed your cue... For the repeat of Andy I don't consciously bit. do it's that, fine. but, you know, it's I seem fine. to always Good. copy you. Good, no, no. It, the world it's wouldn't perfect. be right then, would it? Ladies and gentlemen. I've got one thing to say. Oh, uh, you've excellent. got it written down. That's great. Oh, he read my mind. It's called <laughs> preparation, dear. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every year we do a year-long patron-only knit-along. Yes. Last year, we were knitting our way down the length of the Amazon River. Yes. And it was marvellous. It was. And we actually finished off our Amazonian Warrior Challenge. 
in our first patron only show of the year where we awarded mm-hmm. prizes yeah. and gave totals and all of that and we did that actually on Sunday just gone we did it we exceeded the Amazon by about 150 kilometers we also at the same time we launched our brand new patron only year long knit along yeah. or crochet along or crochet crochet is always welcome and this year is very exciting because we're going to crochet or knit our way around England, Scotland and Wales. Yes. We're calling it the Great British Coastal Challenge. Yes. It's going to be, well it is unbelievably exciting. Yes. It's quite a long way. It is. Now, Surprisingly, I didn't realise it was quite so far. It's 6,800 miles, which yeah, means it's, it's more, it's 10,000 and it, something kilometres. It's just short of 11,000 kilometres. So yes. yeah, this is the, so it's the perimeter yes. of England, Scotland, England, and Scotland and Wales. So, you know, we can't say Great Britain because Northern Ireland is in Great Britain and that's obviously a different land mass. So we're just focusing on the lump, the yes. one... <laughs> Because we didn't want to make you have to swim. No. Not no, when you're crocheting and knitting it, weighing no, it down. No, we didn't want to complicate it soggy. by having to cross the... And I can't imagine that, that salt water would do much for your knitting. What is that? Irish Sea? Yes. Oh, yeah. which is a it's a tricky cro- crossing at the it best of times. It can be. I've crossed the Irish Sea many times. We and spoke about that in our be. Where is yeah, Home? Yeah, Baker can, Bears radio It can show. be a tricky old business. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that has begun already. And if you want to find out all the details for that, there is a post in our Ravelry group which gives you all the details on how you log your miles in your knitting or your crochet. But not only that, we run at the same time an activity, an outdoor activity, open to everyone. So if you are a walker Mm -hmm. or you are a runner and you would like to join us in our Great British Coastal Challenge, we are going to virtually do the same thing. We're going to race our way around England, Scotland and Wales. Mm -hmm. Now to do that, you need to set up a free RunKeeper account. You then need to email me and let me know your RunKeeper registered email and your RunKeeper username. And you need to tell me how many miles you think that you'll probably walk each month. You'll then get invited into a team. And the team names are exceptional. They're all Yorkshire villages. Brilliant names. And these are all real places. I'm not going to go through all of them, but how's about... Team Land of Nod. Land of Nod. Which is a hamlet yeah. in Yorkshire. Or what about Team Crackpot? Crackpot. Or Team Booze? I like Wham. There's Team Wham. There's also Team Jingling Pot. <laughs> now, how did that get its name? And the, That's what I'd like well, to know. Well, the good thing is that you and me dip in, dip in and out of all of these, don't we? Basically, to, what to, we do is... To distribute our mileage. Through the course of the we year. We just go in all of them. Whichever team is doing the worst in yeah. a particular month, we jump into that team. Yes. And we, we race with that team that yeah. month. The great thing about this year's challenge is, though, you have a complete map of the area that we're going to be going around and you yeah. know the distances. Yes. So we'll be able to plot where we are yes. going around. Yes. And I'm going to be updating in our Facebook group. I will be updating the knitters every week on where we are. So we're starting at the nearest point to where we are here. Yeah. So it'll be on the coast in County Durham and then we're going in a northwards direction. So we'll be going up north, you know, the northeast of England and then hitting Scotland, going around and then back to our starting point. So if you're a patron and you want to get involved with the Knit Along or the Crochet Along, there's a link in our show notes which tells you how. Similarly, if you are anybody who would like to join us in our walk or run around the area that we've explained, then there is a link in our show notes Mm -hmm. which is open to everyone. So you can click on that link and it will tell you all the details of how you get involved with our walk and our run. It, and it is feet on the ground. It we is. do get asked quite a lot, can, we, can you cycle? No. Unfortunately not. It's got to be feet on the ground, so yes. running and walking. So yes, please do come and join us in our amazing Great British Coastal Challenge this year. It's great fun every year. We've done some great things yeah. over the last few years, but we're particularly excited this year just because the theme of it and the team yeah, names yeah, and yeah, everything. Yeah, just fun. Just, you know, we oh, always have a lot of fun doing this, but yeah, it should be great fun this and, year. And every patron-only show at the end of every month, we will give you an update yes. for the, the walking and the running yeah. and also the knitting um, yes. and we also with the walking and the running we do have a Facebook group that we've set up specifically that anyone can request to come and join yeah. but we also there's a way to interact in the Run Keeper app too so it's a great community activity and there will be prizes I'm yes. going to I'll let you all you all know in February's pop what those prizes are going to be I've changed it up a bit this year and it's going to be really special cool you have something to say 
Yes, so a little while ago, I was contacted by lovely Susan B. Anderson and she asked, she was knitting my crunkled socks and she asked if it would be okay if she produced yarn kits in her Barrett Wool Company shop for the socks. And of course I said, of course, you know, that would be fantastic. I'm thrilled that you want to do that. I didn't forget about it or anything like that, but it just suddenly just occurred. Yesterday, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, one of our patrons let me know that, because she gets Susan's newsletter and she, that Susan had actually launched these kits in her shop. So I was like, oh my goodness, went and quickly had a look. And there's a number of kits. She's got some fantastic photos of the socks that she's knit up in her yarn, different color combinations. So you can go to Susan's shop and buy a yarn kit for the socks. And then you just need to pop over and buy the pattern from either Ravelry or Lovecrafts. And, you know, it's just been amazing, you know, and of course, lots of lovely people have gone and bought my pattern, which has just been amazing. It was it was unexpected because I didn't know when it was happening. So it's just a lovely thing. And you know, I messaged Susan straight away and said, oh my goodness, you know, thank you so much. And I've actually got one of her yarn kits on the way to me because I wanted to, I've never tried Susan's yarn and it just seemed a perfect reason to actually to get one of the kits. So I've got that on the way to me and I'll show you that and I'm, you know, I'm obviously going to knit some crinkled socks in it. I think I've got to do that. So if that's something you're interested in, then pop over to Susan's shop. A lot of the colourways did actually sell out yesterday because I looked last night and I think three out of the six colourways had sold out. But I checked this morning and I think she's topped them up again because I think there's only one that's sold out now. So she must have sort of added some more kits in there. So I'm thrilled that they're selling well for Susan and I'm, you know, I'm thrilled that... Um, I've had some sales as well and it's just really lovely because that is one of my favourite patterns and you just never know, you know, you never know when you design something what's going to happen and sometimes some designs that I think will be really popular don't end up being popular and then others that I think, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure what will happen to this, they just go crazy so it's, it's just lovely when something like that happens. So thank you to Susan if you're watching and thank you to everybody that's gone and bought a kit and a pattern for them. I hope you enjoy them. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. Yes. Yes. Delighted to be Yay. here. And it's going to be such an amazing year of shows, as we said at the start of the show. And what a perfect way to start today with a wonderful episode of My Favourite Colourways. Yes. So whatever you're doing over the next couple of weeks, Absolutely. take good care of yourselves. Yep. And we will see you in two weeks for more. See you soon, the everybody. Bakery video show. Bye! Yeah.